roundhouse kick, spinning back kick, hook kick. These are some of the most spectacular karate techniques you will ever find. Yet they're nowhere to be found in Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. In fact, if you look at the work of the early karate pioneers, there's not a single high kick to be found anywhere. And the reason is because they never existed in karate to begin with. Yet modern karate is full of flashy and spectacular kicks. It's almost as if they came from a different martial art. Funnily enough, that's exactly what happened. In today's video, you're gonna learn how karate stole its kicks, and it all started with a single photo. Check it out. The original purpose of karate was self-defense. But when the art was brought to mainland Japan, it switched from a system of self-protection to self-perfection. And the primary training method to achieve this goal was kata. There was only one problem. When you compared this new martial art of karate to the pre-existing ones like judo and kendo that were already practiced across Japan at different university clubs and schools, there was one thing missing. A way of testing your skills against each other. In judo, you could start sparring almost from day one. And the same went for kendo, the modern form of Japanese sword fighting. But in karate, you couldn't spar with kata. Bunkai, or the practical applications of kata, were not meant for play fighting. They were deadly and dangerous. If karate wanted to be able to compete, then something had to be done. And the solution was found in a completely different martial art that had already arrived in Japan way before any Okinawan karate master had set their foot on the shore. That martial art was savat, or French kickboxing. Savat is a French martial art based on fencing. And the reason it's called savat is because that was the name for the shoe that the French fencers wore during the 17th and 18th century. But when swords were banned in France, these fencers had to use their feet for kicking instead, which is why French kickboxing is known as savat. It's literally fencing with the feet. And when you look at old savat fighting manuals, it has a striking similarity to modern sports karate. All of the kicks that old school karate didn't have are right there. Even some punching techniques like the Kizamitsuki, which of course is nothing but a thrust with your sword, except without the sword because it was banned. And each kick can be done in one of two different ways, either as a slingshot or as a spring. In Japanese, we call them Kekomi and Keage, and this is where it comes from. And if you look at the footwork, you'll see that they're still using the old fencing style movements, just like modern sports karate. But here's the real kicker. Savat had developed a competition format with the first touch scoring a point. As soon as a fighter was hit, they shouted tush, just like we shout kiai today. The fight was stopped, yame, and with a salute, they started again, just like modern karate competitions. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now I know what you're thinking, but Jesse, how did French kickboxing get into modern karate? And I'm glad you asked, because it's all based on something that happened in 1870 to 71, known as Battle of Sedan, when the French people lost to the Germans. To rectify this dishonor and inspire its people, the French created a new type of training methodology by combining German gymnastics with savat creating a completely new way of practicing the martial arts. For example, the Four Faces Method, an original set of codified movements used to train dozens of people in grid-like formations. This new type of trendy martial arts training method was a smash hit and spread throughout the nation, both in the army and in schools. And it eventually made its way all the way to Japan. 
You see, at this moment in time, Japan was trying to become a global superpower. So they borrowed everything they could from the West. Science, arts, engineering, you name it. In fact, the French sent several military expeditions to Japan in order to redesign their whole military industrial complex. And these new types of savat training methods were included. And one man who was particularly impressed by savat was Yoshitaka Funakoshi. And his dad was Gichin Funakoshi, the father of modern karate. And it all started with a single photo. This is the very first evidence of a mawashigeri, or a roundhouse kick, to ever show up in any karate book. And the person on the photo is Yoshitaka Funakoshi. Now, Yoshitaka was actually born in Okinawa, but he went to Tokyo, Japan, together with his father when he was 17 years old, and later became the main man responsible for teaching karate around the different university clubs. And his experiences and observations during this time of teaching karate around the country led him to make some changes to his father's karate. According to the writings of Don F. Drager, the world's leading expert on Japanese budo, I quote, Japanese karate do in general, under the influence of the younger Funakoshi, eventually became only a quasi-combat form, because both weapons and throwing techniques were discarded. Many of the techniques developed, if used under the conditions of serious combat, are reckless and liable to cause serious injury to the user. And you gotta understand that national pride in Japan was at an all-time high right now, and Yoshitaka was a huge fan of the Japanese army, so he literally copied the entire training methodology, along with its numerous kicks, straight from Savat. Because that's what karate needed if it was going to survive. And the result was an explosive growth in karate in Japan. Every karate book published after this point contains numerous spectacular fancy high kicks. They're jumping all over the place, something that none of the old karate pioneers ever did or showed. And the very same year as the old Funakoshi died, the first All Japan Karate Tournament was being held and the floodgates were open. A new type of karate had emerged, modern, sports-based karate, something that had never existed in karate before. Wow, what a story, huh? I wanna say a big thank you to my friend Matthias Golinski for helping me track down these French and German old books and manuals and sources that provided the basis for this video. Now, if you wanna learn even more about the true history of karate, Check out some of my other videos because there is so much to learn that people don't generally talk about. Thank you so much for watching. Train hard, good luck, and have fun. That was not a karate kick, that was a savat kick.